What about you guys? How's it going? I hope you're all keeping well today. Hope everything is good where you are. It's been a while, hasn't it? You've missed me, haven't you? Go on, admit it. I know you have. I hope you're all keeping safe and I hope you're all keeping well during these troubling times. It's been a really weird time as of late, hasn't it been? And I hope you're all having been going crazy being locked up in the house for so long. I know I haven't been going crazy. One thing that's been great during these troubling times is that so many people have been learning new skills, working on old talents, refining them, and that we're seeing so many people offering different lessons and classes online too. So it's been great to see a lot of people have still been coming together as well through the power of the internet. It's been really great to see. So of course, I wanted to jump on that bandwagon as well. Plus the old photography bug has bit me as of late because it's been a wee while since I've done much teaching on the photography and I've been kind of missing it. So for these next couple of videos, I wanted to talk about some of the key elements that build up your photographs, the technical side of things and the creative side as well, and how you can put them into practice to maybe achieve a look that you've been looking for but you haven't known how to. So hopefully these videos will be very helpful for you. And I want to break them down bit by bit so I'm not flooring you with so much information right now because it could probably be quite daunting. So one of the first things that I wanted to talk about is a little thing known as aperture. So it's essentially what aperture is, it's all about how much light comes in through your lens. Inside your lens, no matter what lens you have, you have these collections of little blades that open up and close to allow more or less light in. Think of it like your eyes. If you go from a light room to a dark room, what happens? Your eyes open up to let more light in. Or if you go from the dark room to the light room, they'll close over to let less light in. And as you can see here from my little lens, as I turn the aperture wheel, I can open up to let more light in, or I can turn it the other way and let less light in. So the measurement that we tend to use with aperture is a little something known as F stops or F numbers. So F2.8, F4, F11, things like that. And this is where photography could get a little confusing, I find. Because you would hear, say for example, F2.8, it's quite a small number. To us, we would tend to think, okay, small number, the little hole in the lens should be quite small then. F16, it's quite a large number, so the hole should be quite large. So it's actually working in reverse with an f2.8. It's what's known as a wide open aperture. It's letting in a lot of light. Whereas f16, on the other hand, it's quite a small or a closed aperture, so it's letting in less light. Now, of course, different lenses will have different aperture readings, mostly in regards to what's known as the maximum aperture. So say, say this lens here, the little 50 mil that we've been showing, the maximum aperture this has is f2.8. So I can open up this lens to f2.8. But there are some lenses that let you open up more. You can get ones that have f1.8 or f1.4. They're generally what's known as more portrait style of lenses. And the reason why is we'll explain that very shortly. And this is why you'll also find some lenses might be a little bit more expensive than the other because yes, we look out for overall quality, but aperture plays a big role on that because not all lenses can open up wide. They can all close down, but they can't open wide. So you'll always want to look out for those sorts of things depending on the sort of situation that you want to use the lens on. Like if it's a sport or a concert, like for me with a concert photography, I need quite wide open lenses like the 2.8s. So that's the technical side of aperture. Are your heads fried yet? So now I wanted to talk about the creative side because yes, more or less light is one of the things aperture does, but the other thing that we can also control is what's known as our depth of field. And that's the distance between your subject and the background or foreground. So you've probably seen references of these sorts of things like say, you're taking photographs of portraiture work and you tend to see that the subject is nice and in focus but everything around is completely blurred out. Well, what's actually going on there is that the photographer is using a wide open aperture to allow a lot more distance in the background so it's completely blurred out but your subject is remaining completely in focus. Whereas if you look at the likes of landscape photography, you'll see that the photographs are very detailed, they're very sharp. And what the photographers tend to do with those is they would close down their aperture, the likes of f11, f16, where they get quite a lot of detail, but they have a shorter depth of field going on because it's creating all that detail. And there's different things that you can do to see these results. 
uh, you can go to your camera scene mode where there's portraits and landscapes where the camera's working automatically to do this sort of thing. Or if you want to be a bit more hands-on with your camera rather than letting it do an automatic mode, you can turn your mode dial to A or AV. So this is known as aperture priority. And what's going on here is when you turn the wheel of your camera, whether it's on the front or the back, you're controlling the camera's F number and the camera's shutter and ISO will work automatically to correspond. So from here, you can then say if I want more depth of field or less depth of field, just by the turn of the wheel. Say for example, let's, let's look at some of these images here. I've taken some images of a couple of little Funko Pops. We've got Rapunzel and we've got Spyro. And we're just gonna go through different apertures here just to see. So these photographs were taken on a Sony A7 Mark I with the Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8. This first image here was taken at f2.8 and you can see here like there isn't much of a distance difference uh, between Rapunzel and Spyro. Rapunzel is nice and in focus, she's nice and sharp, but Spyro has blurred out. So there's a lot of depth of field going on here. So let's stop down our aperture a little bit more. Let's go to f4. Okay, you can see Probably not the biggest difference here from f2.8. Let's keep going. We got f5.6. Now if you look here at f8, Spyro is actually appearing a lot sharper. He's not as blurred out. Keep on going from there. We've got f11, he's sharpening up a lot more. And then we go to f16, he's looking really sharp now. And then we've got f22, so f22 is the uh, smallest aperture that I can go down to on this. But you can see what a difference that, that has made. Now, I could have easily moved these subjects a bit further back or more forward if I wanted to, but I didn't. All I just did here was just change my aperture. And what a difference that, that made to my image from the f2.8 all the way to the f22. So let's recap. The two things Aperture does is allow more or less light in through the lens, but it also controls your depth of field. And the best setting on your camera to experiment with Aperture is Aperture Priority, which is listed as A or AV on your camera's mode dial. And that way the camera, you are in full control of the Aperture, so you can create how much more distance you want or how less distance that you want. So do give it a go yourself. Set up some little things around your house or if you're going outside taking photographs of the plants or landscapes, try different apertures like I was doing with Rapunzel and Spyro. The best way that I was able to try and experiment with that was trying it at different aperture styles. There's no real right or wrong as to what you want to get as long as you're getting a style of shot that you want. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and do like, share and press that wee subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with future videos. There's going to be another video dropping very soon on the next key aspect of your photography exposure so do keep an eye out for that. It'll be dropping very soon. But until then guys, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.